All right, on this problem, I couldn't draw that very well. You can see it a whole lot better with the picture that the book has. Uh, and I was able to kind of pull it up bigger for you to see here. So it's a, I don't remember. A force of 600 pounds is required to pull a boat and a trailer up a ramp inclined at 15 degrees from the horizontal. Notice they've shown you, here's your horizontal and the boat ramp is 15 degrees above the horizontal. And uh, we want to find, not find, find the combined weight of the boat and trailer. And we can do that using vectors. So I'm going to give you some information here. Um, first of all, let's, we've got two triangles. I'll just tell you, those two triangles are similar triangles. And we know here that vector BA, notice that vector BA is the one that's perpendicular to the horizontal. The magnitude of vector BA is the force of gravity. Now, if, you, if there are some physics people in here, you may be able to explain this better than I can. But, but it's the force of gravity. In this case, um, you're talking about if something's falling. But we're talking about from that boat. If it's the force of gravity of the boat, it is the combined weight of the boat of the boat and the trailer. This is the this actually is the weight of the boat and trailer. But you're right. If you have if you drop something, uh, acceleration due to gravity is negative yeah. 32 feet per second or nine nine point eight meters per second. This is the weight of the boat and trailer. In this particular case, with this vector, because that's the force of gravity on it, that's how much is pulling down. So is BA like a line? It's a vector. To the ground? It's perpendicular to the horizontal, yes. Wait, I thought BC was perpendicular to the horizontal. No, BA is perpendicular to the horizontal. BC is perpendicular to the ramp. Oh, oh okay. yeah, that's what I meant. BC is perpendicular to the ramp. And yeah, BC okay. is the force against the ramp. And ray, our, uh, vector AC is the force required to move the boat. The, the magnitude of vector AC is the force required to move the boat. In this case, it's 600 pounds. So in this case, that force we're told is 600 pounds. Now we have two similar triangles. If we know that this is 15 degrees here, then that tells us that if these are similar triangles, this is going to be 15 degrees as well. So we know what this vector is in this right triangle. That's 600. We have a right triangle. We know what this angle is. So what trig function, what we're trying to find is the combined weight. In other words, we want to find the magnitude of vector BA, which is what in that right triangle? What's the relationship in the right triangle to the angle? It, which, which particular side? Hypotenuse. Vector um, A, B, or B, A is the hypotenuse. So we know that the sine of 15 is opposite over hypotenuse. And we can find the magnitude of the vector, which is the combined weight of the boat and the trailer. by taking 600 divided by the sine of 15.
Oh, wait, uh, the magnitude of AC, is that negative force required? It's just a little dash. No, it's just a dash. Okay, 2,318. Okay, so the combined weight of the boat and the trailer is about 2,318.2 pounds. Now, a formula that is helpful to us is that the sine of theta equals force required over weight. So that might be a little formula. It's not in your book written down that way, but you're going to have some problems in your homework that uses that. So if you have that somewhere, it's very helpful. The sine of theta equals force over weight. Well, they aren't here. All right, so we want to find the component form of the vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 150 miles per hour at an angle 20 degrees below the horizontal. Now, I just copied this picture out of your book so we could all have a good picture to look at instead of trying to draw it because you know how wonderful my drawing skills are. But notice this says that the speed is 150 miles per hour. That is our magnitude. That's the magnitude of this particular vector that we want to come up with. The magnitude of the vector is 150. And the direction angle, to find direction angle, it has to always be an angle that's a positive angle from the x-axis. Now, if we are 20 degrees below the horizontal, what is my direction angle? Negative 20. 180 plus 20. 180 plus 20. Notice that they've drawn a little arrow for us. We can see we have to go all the way around from the positive x-axis 20 degrees past the 180. So our direction angle is 210 degrees. No, 20, 200 degrees. 180 plus 20. So if we're going to put this in component form, let's go back to the formula that says our vector equals the magnitude of the cosine of theta i plus the sine of theta j. That's linear combination, but that's a formula that we have. I'm going to move that over a little bit. So I'm just going to plug in what I have. Uh, my speed's 150. That's the magnitude. And we want the cosine of 200. And the sine of 200. Is that an angle we know? So... If we don't know that, what do we do? Calculator. So, 150 times the cosine of 200 is what? Negative 140.95. And 150 times the sine of 200? Negative 51.3. And that is the component form, which is what it asks us to find, of the vector represented by that airplane. That's all there is to that problem. We have Airplane speed of 500 miles per hour. This is an airplane. Its speed is 500 miles per hour. Uh, it's flying on a bearing of 330 degrees with negligible uh, wind velocity. At a particular point, the plane encounters wind velocity of 70 miles per hour uh, from north 
45 degrees east. We want the resultant speed and direction of the airplane. Once that wind kicks in of the airplane. Okay, so first of all, we know that the airplane is on a bearing of 330 degrees. So if we think about that with the plane, it means that it is right th going that way, right? Bearing of 330 degrees. Bearing is always from north. Bearing is always from north. But our direction angle has to be where? Wait, wouldn't it be on the other side then? 330 degrees from north, 360 degrees would have you back to north again. You right. always go, yeah. All right, so, but the direction angle has to be from the positive x axis. So, what's our direction angle going to be? Well, 330 is how much less than 360? So, 90 plus 30 is 120. So our direction angle is 120 degrees. So if we want to put the vector for the airplane in, if we want to write that as a vector, we know the speed is 500 times the cosine of 120. I'll just put it in component form. And the sine of 120. So if we multiply those together, um, we would get the cosine of 120 is negative one half, so that's going to be negative 250. The sine of 120 is a square root of 3 over 2, so that's 250 square roots of 3. We agreed on that? Is that reasonable? All right, so now at some point, though, we get a wind that's going to come in, and it's coming from north 45 degrees east. So the wind, if we think about the wind from north 45 degrees east, it's here. So what is this direction angle? 45. And its magnitude is 70. And so if we multiply through, we get 70 times the cosine of 45, 35 square roots of 2. <clears throat> and 35 square roots of 2. So what is the resultant vector? How do I get the resultant vector? V1 minus V2. We, this time we're going to add them together. V1 plus V2. So we probably need to use a calculator here. Because we can't add two fifth, negative 250 and 35 squared to 2. V1 plus V2. We add the A parts together and then add the B parts together. Where is V1? Right here. Okay. And V1, you have done it with the speed, no? Pardon? V1, you have done it with the speed, and V2 is what? V1 is the airplane, V2 is the wind. Are these correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Alright, so what did the problem ask me to find? How do I find the speed? The magnitude of V1 plus V2. Aren't you glad you have calculators? <laughs> so the magnitude is going to be the square root of 
negative 200.5 squared plus 482.5 squared and that is anybody got it yet? Five hundred and I have five two two point three. Okay. I have five two two point five. It depends on where you rounded. Okay. I might have put the actual numbers in when I did it. Five about five hundred and twenty two and a half miles per hour, approximately. That's the resultant speed. Now if we want to find the direction, we know we can take the tangent of theta equals 482.5 over negative 200.5. And what do we get? We should get a negative 67.434. Now, 67.434 is our reference angle. What quadrant would that resultant vector be in? Quadrant 2. That resultant vector would be in quadrant 2, but this is quadrant 4, so how do I get the direction angle? Add 180. We add 180 because this is a quadrant 4 angle, so if we add 180 to that. How do you know that this is in quadrant 2? Do you want to use the two? How do we know it's in quadrant 2? Tyler? Uh, I was going to ask, I got that. Like, awesome. Did you have this negative right here? You didn't put your negative in. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Okay, because your tangent, the value of the tangent is negative. Oh, Calculator is arctan. Arctan. Oh, That's going to give you a negative angle. But notice the vector is negative 200.5, 482.5. That puts you in quadrant 2. So you have to add 180. Plane is traveling at 724 kilometers per hour and a bearing of 30 degrees. If the wind is 32 kilometers per hour from the west, we want to find the resultant speed and the bearing. So if we think about our train, our plane, there's north. If he's traveling at a bearing of 30 degrees, the plane's going like this at 724 kilometers per hour. And then the wind is coming from the west. It's coming this way. So it's going to push the plane over a little bit. And so its speed is 32 kilometers per hour. And it's coming directly from the west. So its direction angle is what? The wind. I'm going to call that uh, vector 2. The magnitude is 32. What's the angle if it's coming from the west? From, okay, from the positive x-axis, we're really going to be zero. So we'll have the cosine of zero, sine of zero. Uh, vector one, the speed of the plane is 724. Now, if the bearing is 30, what's the direction angle? 60. So I'm putting this in component form. So the cosine of 60 is 
one half, so this is going to become 362, and the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, so we'll have 362 square roots of 3. That's our airplane vector. Our wind vector. What's the cosine of zero? And the sine of zero? Zero. So our velocity vector is going to be 32, zero. Our wind vector. Okay, so if we want to find the resultant speed, I have to add those two vectors together. So vector 1 plus vector 2 will be 394. Okay, so that's the vector. How do I get the speed? No, the speed. Oh, the magnitude. Magnitude. Of, oh, okay. The magnitude of the resultant vector is the speed, and that's going to be... You can use your calculators. Okay, approximately 740.5 kilometers per hour. The square root of... Because that's the vector. We get the bearing from the vector. This is the vector that this V1 plus V2 is the new vector once the plane is pushed off course a little bit by that wind. Okay. So how do I get the bearing? Or first we've got to get a direction angle. I still get the wrong answer for the Yes and I. It's probably in how you're putting in the square root of three. So tangent of three ninety four over three sixty two square root three? The tangent of theta, I'll come look at it in a minute. The tangent of theta equals 362 square roots of 3 over 394, which is what? Are you in degrees? Yeah. Use arctan? Yeah. 57.855. 57, about 57.86 degrees is the direction angle. So that means that's from the positive x axis over. How do we get bearing? Subtract it from 90. So that's in from the north? From north, yes. Bearing's always from north. Okay, so our bearing is 32.14 degrees. Our speed is 740 and a half kilometers per hour. Okay, the assignment is on page 455. 84, 86, 88. 96, 98, and 112. 84, 86, 88, 96, 98, and 112.